I guess that we've been chosen to be here tonight to help present the award because we stand here as living proof of our mother's amazing ability to give of herself and um, <laughs> seriously and uh, <laughs> this is something that's made her world famous. I know what it's like to juggle two kids and a career but my mother juggled five children and a career and choose the original super mom. Mom, I don't know how you did it. What we're all trying to say, Mom, is we're really proud of you. <laughs> um, we always thought that when we were in the audience and my mom was singing that she was making a very special connection just to us because we were her kids. But um, we'd go backstage and uh, you'd realize that she was making a special connection really to everyone because her fans, individual people would come up to her and act as if they knew her when in fact they were in the 30th row way the hell back there and, and she never saw them. But she always made them feel that, uh, that she was singing just to them as well. Now with all this honor and acclaim bestowed upon her, you would think that she would have no complaints, but uh, oh no. I've had a long and wonderful career. And this June, I'm making my debut on the stage of La Scala in Milan. Mind you, playing an 85-year-old woman who dies. And I can see the headlines now. Maureen Forrester made her debut on the stage of La Scala and died at age 60. <laughs> well, to all the opera composers throughout history, I mean, I have a really serious point to make. You never let me play the bride although I've got a lot of passion. On stage, it's always been denied. Low-voiced lovers are not in fashion. You never let me hold the man, although I would be more than willing. I always have to hold a fan, or wear a habit, or plan a killing. Why am I destined to play the nurse to Exenia? Oh, what law gave the sopranos the libido and contraltos neurasthenia? I've played a lot of men for Gluck. Decadent kings and aging queens for Handel. Would anyone see it as a fluke if just once I was the cause of the scandal? No, I've had men at my feet, you know. But composers say, <laughs> no, no, no. You have to play the ante or the jolly green giant, Erda. Well, I'm getting defiant. You never let me play the bride. You give me a brother who's an assassin or a lover who's just died. As fancies go, I'm always passing. I have to walk off stage alone. Someone with far more past than future. Why not a love song all my own? Let me tug a heartstring and not a suture. Where is fair? I get to play Ulrika. She's a sorceress. The bride may glide, but I have to creep or waddle, even dawdle. Oh, it's torturous in Pelleas and Bellisande. Geneviève, the queen, I play with bearing. But nevertheless, I must despond. It's the princess, not the queen, at whom they're staring. Played Suzuki in Butterfly, and all too often I've played a guy. And though I've got the notes, you know I'm really a terror. There has been an anatomical error. You never let me play the bride. Yet if I switch, what's there to covet? For even on the Broadway side, I'd be Mama Rose or that Mrs. Lovett. And so it really does appear that with a voice down in the cellar, I'd be the one to get the gear, while head a high note gets the fella. Oh, I do wow them, Miss Cattershaw, or a dying oracle. My, they cry as I give the final prophecy, insane or allegorical, as mothers, maids, witches, bitches, mediums, nuns, or ants, or pants. It's obvious I'm highly qualified. But I never get to play the bride. You don't know what you're missing. Well, Mom, I'd like to join with everyone here to thank you for many, many years of inspiration, grace, humor, and beautiful sound. And most importantly, I think my mother has been an inspiration 
for people who believe in themselves and have the courage to try to fulfill their talents. Because we will be here behind you to embrace and support you as your family, artistic community, and country. Tonight, my mother. Never mind the singing, you see what I really do well. <laughs> I had help, of course, from the wonderful Eugene Cash. But I want to tell you about me, the singer, because I never wanted to be a singer. I'm that woman who walks down Young Street humming to herself and people, that crazy woman. I sing to myself all the time. Even if I don't get paid, I sing. That's, that's kind of something, you know, in this day and age. But my mother really wanted me to, you know, to achieve something in life. And she wanted to be a singer, and I, I didn't want to be a singer. But anyway, I joined church choirs. And I, when I got my first paycheck, I thought, this isn't a bad thing to do when you get paid for doing something you like to do. But I did it for her. And she was a wonderful, wonderful woman. And several years ago, she died at a great age. She'd had a wonderful life. And the very last thing she said on the day she died to me was, music has been my whole life. And I think tonight, if I want to say something that maybe means more to me than uh, to anybody else, this woman who gently pushed me into a career I didn't think I wanted knew better than I did, because I have had a phenomenal life of meeting wonderful people and, and musicians all over the world. And I think my mother owns this award tonight. And she's up there, I know, somewhere looking down. So, Mom, this is for you. You deserve it. And I thank you. And I'm terribly, terribly moved and honored. And thank you so much. Stay tuned for fancy fretwork as the 1990 Juno Awards continue with the Jeff Healy Band live. 